And this is the last part of our tutorial and we'll be deploying our movie management application to Verso. So why Verso? What is, uh, what is Verso? Uh, Verso is a cloud platform for static site hosting and serverless functions uh, built for the modern web. It's a great choice for deploying Next.js applications because it offers a number of benefits that make deploying, scaling, and managing your app much easier. Uh, firstly, Vercel is optimized for static sites and Next.js apps, which means that it's able to provide fast and reliable performance for your app. This is especially important when using features like client-side rendering and server-side rendering, which can have a big impact on the uh, user experience. Uh, secondly, Vercel makes it easy to deploy your app and manage your environment. You can deploy your app with just a few clicks, and Vercel takes care of everything else, including um, creating the necessary resources, setting up your environment, and configuring your, your DNS um, settings. This makes it much uh, easier. Uh, to focus on building your app rather than worrying about deployment. It also helps improve your workflow. So uh, uh, with Vercel, you could hook up your, if your project is hosted on GitHub, you could hook it up, hook your, your repository to um, Vercel. And when you deploy or push changes, Vercel automatically um, merges that and, you know, Rebuilds a, 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 a your um, projects with a more with the with the newly committed or newly pushed files, and it, it speeds up the development workflow. Uh, thirdly, uh, Versa offers a number of advanced features that make it easy to optimize your app for performance and scalability. Uh, for example, you can use Versa's Edge Network to cache your app's assets and uh, improve performance, or use Versa's serverless functions to offload heavy processing to the cloud and improve scalability. And overall, Vercel is a great choice for deploying Next.js apps, especially with the Next.js features we've used in this tutorial. It's focused on static sites and Next.js optimization, along with its uh, easy deployment and advanced features, make it a top choice for developers looking to build and deploy high-performance scalable uh, web apps. So let's get started with it. Uh, first off, we want to make a few um, configurations. Uh, the next auth library, uh, in the deployment guide, the uh, we are required to set to um, environment variables, next auth secret and next auth URL. If you are deploying to Vercel according to them, we do not uh, have to um, add the next auth URL environment variable, but we do need to create a next auth secret environment variable. And you can create that using uh, by uh, using the command open SSL run b 6432 So I'm gonna um, go to my um, terminal. I'm going to quickly uh, run that command. Uh, open, open SSL. Uh, Rand uh, base uh, 64 um, 32. And you can see I have this um, string, alphanumeric string. I'm going to copy it in a way to go to my environment variables and I'm going to paste it. Oops. I'm going to uh, paste it in there. Uh, great. So uh, one more thing to note, uh, your environment variables should not be exposed. Versal provides a way to store these um, environment variables, which we'll look at um, very soon. One more thing to note, um, your GitHub auth application um, uh, settings for your auth app. After deploying the new um, the new URL that Vercel is going to assign to your project, you, re you replace this localhost um, URL with it, and also the authorization callback uh, URL. You replace it with the new URL that Vercel is going to assign to you after um, deploying. So let's look at deploying. So first off, remember you we cloned the starter files. How do we now get started? How do we now deploy these starter files? So uh, depending on your um, if you are pretty confident with um, Git and GitHub, you, you definitely have a way to do that. But if you don't, uh, you can cre easily create a, a new repository. So in, I'm going to create a new repository and I'm going to call it a real ranger uh, uh, clone. And I'm going to create a repository. And you see, it's giving us some some quick um, diets. So we, we, look, we are focused on a uh, Pushing an existing repository from the command line. So we're gonna um, add this um, the, um, this um, newly created repository as our origin file for our um, clone branch. So I'm gonna head to our um, our 
terminal in our um, project directory. I'm gonna paste that and hit enter. Okay, so you're gonna return an error. So how do we fix that? We simply run um, git init and we run that again. And we are uh, we are good to go. Okay, so the next thing is uh, we're going to um, run this command git branch m main. So where um, m is a flag that uh, stands for move or rename and it's used to force the rename even if the new branch name already exists. So we're going to hit enter and great. So then we're, gonna, we're then going to push um, our files but before we do that we have to run git add and git uh, uh, commit. So we're going to put in a commit message and we're going to say uh, deployment and hit enter and then we then run git push u origin main and this command is used to push changes made on the local main branch to the remote repository on the origin um, server which is typically github in our case and the u flag um, is used to set the upstream branch to origin slash main which means that in the future when we run the git push command without specifying the remote branch git we assume we are using this um this current one Okay, and that's what we were asked to um, run right here. So, I'm gonna head back to our code editor and hit uh, enter. And as you can see, it's been pushed to GitHub. So we're gonna check the, the, the see the see our changes being reflected by uh, refreshing uh, our repository page. And you can see now we have um, our project. I can see the uh, the deployment time a minute ago. So we are good to go. So it's time to deploy on Vercel. Now Vercel needs works best with GitHub. So when you create an account with um, Vercel, it's going to ask you to auth it's going to um, prompt you to authorize Vercel on your GitHub um, account. So when you do that, you then click on create a new project. And if you can see here, we have Primus Learning in our case, which is my account, and the only one repository which is my repository that I just created. Ranger clone and I'm going to click on uh, import so if you need to this is why um, Vercel needed to authorize um, access to github so that it could fetch this for you and I'm going to click on um, I'm going to click on import and it could give my project a name I'm going to leave it as real ranger clone and my framework preset as you can see we could deploy angular astro dojo gatsby jack ionic uh, preact sanity svelte view you can deploy all this on, um, on Vercel, not just next years. So we're gonna click on Build and Output Settings, and in our case, you're gonna leave it just as it is. In our environment variable, now we're going to literally, I'm um, going to uh, copy and paste the environment variables that we have um, right here. And not to worry, I wouldn't be using these um, environment variables. Vessel automatically splits it, the variable name and the string. So I'm gonna do that again. To the base URL. I'm just gonna copy everything here, highlight everything, and then click on this field and paste and automatically. So I'm gonna paste everything right now, and then we're gonna click on deploy. Now I'm done with my um, environment variables. I'm going to click on um, deploy. see is building and you can see a little visualization of what is going on and Versa is cloning our our repository and also running the Versa build command and installing our dependencies uh, to get our project up and running uh, great and as you can see uh, it says congratulations you just deployed a new project to Versa you can decide to add a custom domain or enable analytics. So I'm going to um, open this. 
And you could see uh, I have this URL Real Ranger Clone the Versus app, and I've been authenticated automatically. So let's um, let's log out, and I'm gonna hit Enter again, and click on Get Started. And you can see it's running this error, um, signing error of callback. Why? We've not changed the URL, it's still on localhost. So we're gonna fix that. We're going to um we're going to copy the, the URL of our project and head to our OAuth application settings and replace it here. And replace, be careful when replacing it in your authorization callback girl. So I don't have double slashes or an invalid URL. I'm gonna click on update application. Great, application updated successfully. So we're gonna uh, go back. We're gonna uh, refresh our page and click on get started. As you can see, we've now been authenticated. So let's let let uh, open this in a new tab to see how it's in an incognito window rather. To see how it's gonna look like for an unauthenticated user or a first time visitor rather. So if I click on get started. You see, it asks me to um, sign into GitHub to continue to um, rearrange a clone. I'm gonna click on it and click on sign in. And I'm being redirected to the authorized application. And you can see I'm right here. I'm gonna quickly log out. And then I'm gonna close this uh, incognito window and let's explore our application. So I'm gonna go to my dashboard. I can see our dashboard here with the carousel, with the items. So let's look at our Top Gun Maverick and click on more details. And we can see basic information about the uh, the movie. So let's quickly open and watch this in a new tab. In our watch list, we have just one movie, uh, Minions, The Rise of Gru. So we're gonna head back and we're gonna add this to my watch list. Add it to watch list, I'm gonna head back here without refreshing. And as you can see, Top Gun has been added. So let's go back and remove it from our watch list. Remove from watch list and then head back here, you can see it's not on our watch list um again so let's quickly search for a movie i'm going to search for uh blade runner um 2049 one of the best one of the best sci-fi movies so click on search as you can see we have blade runner 2049 click on more details and you can see more details about our, our movie application so yes that's basically it congratulations on completing this tutorial on building a movie watch list app with Next.js. Um, you've learned how to build a web app from scratch using a modern front-end framework and some of its exciting features like client-side rendering and data fetching, namely um, get static props, get server-side props, and um, client-side rendering using US using SWR, which stands for Stale While Validate. Uh, now they have a functional movie app yeah, here are some ideas you could try out to, you know, take this project to the next level or improve it. You could add a rating system, um, you know, that will allow users to rate movies on their watch list and display the average rating for each movie. Uh, you could also um, add more search filters to the search, to the search page. You know, you can search movies by the genre, by the rating, by the release year, and much more. You could um, come, you could go to the Flickster API and you know, let them um, look at the endpoints, and you could string together all the optional parameters to make that um, work. You can also implement a recommendation system. This is going to be the best or the big, the biggest upgrade you could give to this application. You know, so based on the users and watch list, you can recommend similar movies that they might like. You know, that is really similar to. Um, movie apps or streaming platforms like Netflix, um, HBO Max, and Amazon Prime. Uh, if you're looking to start a new project with Next.js, uh, you could uh, you could create an e-commerce store, a multi-vendor e-commerce store, uh, where users can not just buy but also sell products. That we would, that we, we, you, you would, you would um, learn how to implement um, access level management in such a product or in such a platform or project rather. You could develop a productivity tool uh, a tool that helps users manage their to-do list, uh, schedule appointments, and set reminders. And in the scheduling appointments, you could make it advanced where you could integrate it with Zoom's SDK or Calendly's API, where when they can schedule an appointment, you can create a meeting based on the set time that the user specifies. And uh, lastly, um, 
which sounds really interesting, you could build a travel application. Uh, an application that helps users plan their travel itineraries, book flights and hotels, and explore new destinations. Uh, whatever project you decide to, uh, to work on, uh, keep learning, experimenting, and building. Watch out for more modern web development tutorials on this channel and keep honing your skills. See you next time. Thank you.